Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Friday, May the 25th. I'm Rafi Barajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be having a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. The US dollar has steadied after yesterday's fall uh, when it came under pressure uh, after President Trump unexpectedly cancelled uh, the planned summit uh, with North Korea in June. Uh, safe havens, though, uh, still remain uh, in demand, even though uh, overall there was muted reaction to the news. Uh, we're seeing gold prices still above the $1,300 level. The pound yesterday got a bit of a lift from better than expected retail sales numbers, but uh, that uh, those gains were short-lived. It's uh, back under pressure again. Uh, and oil prices have slid to uh, two-week lows as Saudi Arabia and Russia uh, signal uh, a possible easing of the output cap. Let's have a, uh, let's get started now with the U.S. dollar. Uh, we can see. Uh, uh, there's a bit of a downtrend developing there for dollar yen. Uh, it's uh, it did fall to two week lows yesterday, uh, briefly falling be below the 109 level. It's now um, recovered a little bit around 109.37 uh, at the moment. Dollar index, though, we can see. Um, is holding fairly close to those five months highs it touched on Wednesday. Uh, it's currently trading just below the 94 uh, level. Uh, so President Trump yesterday said. Uh, uh, that he is not going to go ahead uh, with the summit with uh, the North Korean leader um, as uh, had been planned for some time now. Uh, but uh, there was some relief after North Korea responded in a, in a measured way saying that uh, they remain open uh, to talks uh, in the future. Uh, so uh, we did see dollar index there recovering uh, quick quickly uh, but over, there's still a strong safe haven demand though we can see dollar yen um, not making uh, a very convincing uh, rebound uh, so the dollar does seem to have lost some steam uh, after Wednesday's FOMC minutes uh, which was somewhat on the dovish side and it's looking unlikely that the Fed uh, will be raising rates um, more than three or four times in total in 2018 uh, next in focus for the dollar will be the dual goods orders coming up uh, later today. Uh, if we look at have a look at some safe havens now, we can see gold there jumping high yesterday uh, to a 10-day high above the 1,300 level uh, and has been holding uh, above that level since then, currently trading around 1,304. Uh, the dollar Swiss franc has also come under pressure uh, in recent days. Uh, the dollar franc is currently uh, just off those uh, three close it touched on yesterday uh, so though there doesn't seem to be much uh, concern about the cancellation of the uh, US North Korean summit uh, there is uh, some uh, r trade risks uh, re-emerging um, this came after tr President Trump this week uh, said that he's considering whether or not to impose tariffs on car imports uh, although uh, some really thought that um, the US Secretary uh, Commerce Secretary will be traveling to China uh, to hold more talks with China on the China-US trade dispute, uh, but uh, it's in terms of NAFTA, though things aren't looking that great uh, at the moment. Uh, let's move on to European currencies now. Before we turn to the Canadian dollar to talk more about NAFTA, we can see the euro there uh, struggling again. It's fallen back below the 1.17 dollar level. Uh, it did. It did get some support from better than expected German IFO survey data uh, released a short while ago. But overall, we can see uh, Euro um, not doing too well against the dollar this week. Um, and uh, we did have the ECB minutes as well uh, yesterday, uh, which didn't really uh, reveal much new uh, ECB policymakers aren't too concerned about the slowdown, uh, even though they do say that uh, the slowdown could extend, uh, could get a bit deeper, uh, but they remain confident about the under underlying strength of the economy, so we didn't see much of a reaction uh, to those minutes yesterday. If we take a look at the pound now, we can see sterling uh, briefly rising above the 1.34 level yesterday uh, after much better than expected retail sales numbers out of the UK uh, for April. Uh, that lift wasn't um, didn't last though. We can see sterling currently trading around 1.33.50. 30, uh, 
uh, markets weren't convinced that the data was enough uh, to um, alter BOE policy that would uh, make the BOC raise rates uh, in the coming uh, months. We do have fresh Brexit uncertainty this week. Uh, it doesn't look like the, the talks that were restarted between the UK and the EU uh, on the Brexit negotiations uh, ended well. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much agreement between the two sides and the EU has accused the UK of uh, chasing the fantasy uh, so uh, that could weigh uh, on sterling in the coming weeks, especially as we get into, as we approach the end of June uh, EU summit where uh, Brexit will be the main uh, discussion. Uh, and finally, looking at the Canadian dollar and oil prices, we can see uh, the loony um, declining against the US dollar as oil prices uh, have uh, been retreating uh, in recent days. A dollar loony is um, looking to break a resistance above the 1.29 level. Uh, it's, uh, it's currently trading just below that level. Uh, so uh, in terms of NAFTA, uh, both Mexico and Canada have accused the US of using the car uh, the the uh, the uh, potential uh, tariffs on the car imports uh, as a negotiating tactic to force uh, both Canada and Mexico uh, into a deal. Mexico, though, has uh, made a new offer to the US on the auto sector. So the auto sector is, at the moment, the main sticking point, point uh, in those negotiations, uh, but remains to be seen whether or not uh, the, the three sides will reach a deal uh, anytime soon. If you look at oil prices, we can see WTI uh, falling further today. Uh, it's dropped. It's now dropped to two-week low. Uh, so this comes after Saudi Arabia and Russia uh, both said that they are discussing whether or not uh, to uh, ease the output restrictions uh, when they meet in June. Uh, this is because uh, we're seeing falling output from Venezuela and uh, those output cuts could get even worse uh, if U.S. imposes sanctions on Venezuela. Uh, plus, of course, we have, we've got the threat of sanctions on Iran as well. Uh, so OPEC and non-OPEC members are looking to offset those potential uh, supply disruptions and that is weighing on oil prices at the moment. Uh, and finally, looking at today's economic calendar, we can see the German iPhone numbers uh, beating expectations this morning. We've got UK GDP, the second estimate for first quarter growth coming up shortly, uh, and durable goods out of the US. We're also going to hear from Fed Chair Jerome Powell and the Bank of England Governor Mark Carney uh, when they participate in a panel discussion uh, at 13.20 GMT. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.